Those laws, for them to come into being, had to come from somewhere, from someone, before the creation of the universe. Not even a mind as sharp as Stephen Hawking can write God out of creation, because God is. That's why I'm not an atheist. But that's not why I'm worshiping today. That's not why I follow God. If God just existed and nothing more, I wouldn't want to sing praises or bow in prayer. Now there's something more. And that second part is the second part of why God. And that is this, that God not only exists, but God is active and God cares. God didn't just wind up this world like some oversized toy and let it go. God is involved in every detail of life, even down to the lives of some obscure group of slaves living long ago in some far-off place. Moses wasn't looking for God when he saw the burning bush. God was looking for Moses. And do you remember why? Verse 7. The Lord says, I have indeed seen the misery of my people. I have heard them cry out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The Almighty God, the one whose very name, Yahweh, Jehovah, means I am, That creator of the universe looks through time and space, past the swirling galaxies and the black holes and the dark matter, through the Milky Way in our solar system, to an insignificant planet where among the millions of people on earth, he sees the suffering of a little group of people in Egypt. And God is concerned. And God leads them to freedom and a good place. Over and over again in the Bible, There are the stories of God's activity, God showing up in history, God showing up in the lives of ordinary people, people like me and you. It's amazing, isn't it? That God would care about people like us when there's a whole universe to think about. David expressed his amazement in this way in the the eighth Psalm. He says, when I look at the heavens the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you've set in place? What are humans that you're mindful of them or people that you care for them? Yet you have made us little lower than God and crowned us with glory and honor. Unfortunately, this is the part of God that many people miss out on. 95% of Americans believe in God, that God exists. But that's a long way from knowing the God of the Bible, the God who is active and involved in what he created. Another book that's making the news recently is the book America's Four Gods. It's a result of research out of Baylor University. And they looked at the way that Americans view God, and they found that even though there are dozens of different religions, they pretty much boil down to just four views that Americans hold about God. And they hold them in about equal number, about one quarter of the population for each one. About one quarter of the people view God as a distant God, some great cosmic force that set everything into place, but then just sits back and lets it run. A God who is not involved in in anything at all in terms of our lives because we are just insignificant creatures from an insignificant planet. Ben Franklin expressed this view when he said, a supremely perfect God doesn't care one whit for such an inconsiderable nothing as man. This is the dominant view of American Buddhists and Hindus and Jews and many Christians. They look at God this way. God, the distant God, who really doesn't care. Another quarter of the country views God as a critical God. In this view, God is still not active, 
but God is ticked off. God is sitting somewhere watching things, not getting involved, but just waiting for judgment day. This is the view of just wait till your father gets home and you are going to get it. This critical God will one day judge us and we're going to get a beating. A quarter of the country looks at God that way. God who's going to get us someday. Another quarter of the nation views God as an authoritarian God. This is the God who is just as upset as the critical God, but he ain't waiting around for judgment day. This view sees God as an active God who goes around smiting evildoers. This is a view that sees things like hurricanes as God's punishment on an evil nation. You don't have to wait for your father to get home because he's already here and he's got a belt to whoop you with. Now, when you take all those things into consideration, there's only one quarter, in fact, just slightly less than a quarter, 22% of believers in this country who actually believe that God is benevolent, that God is active in this world in a positive way, that you can have God for a friend, that God can be there in your life working for your benefit. Only 22%. 95% of Americans believe that God exists, but only 22% believe that God is active and that God cares for them in a personal way. But if you look at the Bible, from Moses to Jesus and to the very end, you see a God that doesn't just exist. You see a God that doesn't just create and judge and criticize, though God can do all those things. But you see, over and over again, a God who cares. As John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son. And if you even need more proof than the Bible, well then, start talking to people. Listen to the stories that the people around you tell of how God has been at work in their lives. And if you aren't hearing those stories, Maybe you need to start hanging around some people who aren't afraid to tell them. Or better yet, be that person for someone else. Tell people where you've seen God in your suffering, where God has led you into a good place, a place of milk and honey. Tell the stories so that others can know why God and so that others can join in worshiping the God who is, the God who is active the God who is caring, the God who is worthy of our praise. It might be easier to be an atheist, but it's not near as much fun as knowing God. So let's worship the Lord, Yahweh, the one who is. You pray with me. God, we know that that you interact with us in so many ways. That there are such things as judgment. That there are times when you feel distant from us. But we know, Lord, that your gospel is that you cared so much that you came to us, entered into our suffering so that we could live. And that even though you went through death, you live and reign even now. And no part of our life is outside of your care. You look over our suffering and you're concerned. And you reach down. God, touch us with your Holy Spirit today. Help us to experience your presence and know that you are with us. That you haven't set us adrift. Help us to know that you are. And in knowing that, that you are the the loving, caring, almighty God, may we worship you now in voice and in our heart and soul. Amen.